So, you think you're ready for the eclipse, huh? Yeah, got my eclipse glasses, got my eclipse horns, got my eclipse shirt, got my eclipse drink, got my eclipse camera, got my eclipse dog. Hmm, only 87 more hours to go. Might as well take some test pics. I'm glad I bought you only 500 bucks. Hey, hey, hey dog, dog. What's this over here? I take a picture of you too. <laughs> take a picture of the dog, bud. Uh, is that a is that a squirrel? <laughs> yeah, pretty good eclipse, dog. Actually, yeah. What are you looking at, dog? Uh, you do know you're not in the path of totality, right? Wait, what? What do you mean I'm not in the path of totality? I'm not even in the right area? Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, so you want to go check out the total solar eclipse on April 8th? Well, here's a good resource. This is called timeanddate.com. It will tell you if your location is anywhere near the path of totality. So definitely check this out. people were asking how I'm going to shoot the upcoming total solar eclipse on April 8th. So I thought I would give kind of a rig rundown and hopefully this might help somebody who's thinking about uh, shooting the eclipse. So I'm going to be using matching Canon T3i's on two different rigs. On the first one, I'm going to have a Canon 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. And on that, I'm going to have a 1.4 teleconverter and that should give me a little bit more magnification. And that's going to be riding on a tracking mount from Skywatcher called the AZ GTI that I've converted from an alt as mount to an equatorial mount. Part of the conversion process for the AZ GTI mount is adding the equatorial wedge base. The one that I've chosen is from William Optics. It's a very solid platform and allows for precise control when you're doing your polar alignment and your drift align. Ultimately, it helps you with field rotation and that way you don't have to derotate the image in post-production. The tracking mount on the second rig is from ZWO. It is the AM3, which gives just enough payload capacity to where I can use both scopes at the same time without using a counterweight. For my main telescope, this is the Astrotech 72ED2, and it is a, a doublet refractor at f6. And with this particular camera, the, uh, the T3i, it gives me a focal length of about 460 millimeters, which gives a nice large image of the sun, but just enough room also for uh, the solar corona to be imaged as well. The most crucial piece of gear that you'll use when shooting the total solar eclipse is your solar filter. This is an absolute must. The one that I'm using is the Astromania Deluxe Solar Filter, and I'll have that on both cameras. Aside from the two still cameras that I'm going to be shooting in white light, I'm going to be shooting video through an H-Alpha telescope. It is the Coronado PST. The camera that I'm using on that is a dedicated astro camera. It is the ASI-174MM, which is a mono planetary camera. That camera will send a signal to the ASI Air Plus and the ASI Air Plus will send a Wi-Fi signal to my Kindle Fire tablet. The tablet will allow me to focus much more accurately and it will allow me to start and stop the video recording. I can also change the resolution from say 1080p down to 480p which will enlarge the image and that way I can see features on the sun like sunspots and filaments and I can increase the exposure if I want to see prominences and things like that on the on the edge of the sun. The 
tablet is also good for aligning the sun. I use a technique called a drift align, where I simply rotate the altitude or azimuth knobs on the equatorial wedge, and that will help center the sun and the reticle, that little bullseye looking thing on the tablet. So more than likely, when you're shooting the Eclipse, you're not gonna have any type of outlet uh, to power your tracking mounts or your cameras. So I'm using battery packs. I have eight AA batteries in the Skywatcher AZ GTI. And on the second rig, I have a 12 volt uh, LifePo battery made by Talent Cell. It is a six and a half amp hour battery that uh, falls well below the 100 watt hour maximum allowance that airlines currently impose. I'm running the power from the 12 volt LifePo battery pack to what is called a pocket power box made by Pegasus Astro. And that simply just regulates the power to the tracking mount, the ASI Air Plus, and the dedicated Astro Cam. It also allows me to save on a couple of power cables that I would normally use if I didn't use the pocket power box. Now, of course, this isn't the only way to power your tracking mounts and your cameras, but for me, it has certainly simplified the process. It's taken the laptop out of the equation, which in turn has taken the laptop battery out of the equation, which is normally going to be your heaviest battery pack. And when you're traveling through airports, that's a really good thing. So instead of using something like Eclipse Orchestrator on the laptop, I've decided to use something called Magic Lantern. Magic Lantern is basically like a firmware hack for your camera. It's like taking a $200 DSLR and turning it into a $1,500 DSLR. It adds a whole host of features, things like an intervalometer, bracketed photos, raw video, and even audio monitoring and focus tools. It's going to allow me to shoot a bracketed set of exposures to properly expose all the way from the outer edge of the corona to the inner corona and even the surface features of the sun. So I highly recommend looking at Magic Lantern. For me at least, it's definitely been the right solution. Since I'm not going to be using a laptop to automate the photography process, I'm going to use an app on my tablet called QDSLR Dashboard. This is going to allow me to use the larger screen on the tablet in comparison to the small LCD screen on the camera so I can focus much more precisely. Now, generally speaking, this app would allow you to shoot tethered to your DSLR, but I'm just going to be using it for focusing. And the way to do this is to use a USB-C to USB adapter cable called an OTG adapter cable. You simply hook this into the regular USB cable that comes with your camera and the other end, the USB-C, hooks directly into your tablet. Some of the best advice that I can give is to visit the website of Professor Milo Druckmuller. Uh, he is probably the creme de la creme of Eclipse photographers and his website has it's basically a repository of uh, eclipse photography from all over the world. Most of the images are his and I believe his wife's, but he has other members on his team that have submitted photos uh, using his processing tips and tips for what optics and what tracking mounts and things like that to use. Um, it is really an amazing website. I highly recommend checking this out. Each one of the, the photos that he has, it has a full listing of the optics that were used and all the settings. It does have some processing tips, but it looks like that he has actually designed his own processing software. And I, I don't believe that that is available, but the website is still an amazing resource if you're looking to uh, photograph the, the total solar eclipse. So again, I want to reiterate using solar filters. This is absolutely a crucial part of doing any kind of solar observation or photography. It will keep you from burning up the sensor on your camera, and it will most definitely save your eyes if you're doing visual observations. Most of the equipment that I've mentioned here in the video, I'm going to try to put links down in the description. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. 
And also, if you want to check out more of my photography and video, you can look at my main website called Star Path Images Photo and Video. And there I've got multiple galleries from landscapes and astrophotography and modeling and product shots, a little bit of everything. And I'm also on AstroBin under Alan Howe if you want to see more of my astrophotography work there. So I hope this video has helped somebody who's thinking about photographing the solar eclipse. So thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you would like to see more content like this.